This morning's guest co-created the Green Room. Find out how it's making a difference at Coastal Carolina University. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Architectural Surfaces on Cannon Road off of Highway 501 in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the Computer Science Department at Coastal Carolina University and we're visiting with its acting chair, Dr. Steve Scheel. Good morning, Dr. Scheel. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Do you mind if we call you Steve? Uh, Steve would be fine. How exciting. A lot going on out of the Computer Science Department to recently. Definitely. We've uh, really grown over the number of years, and there's a lot of exciting things going on with our students and faculty. Absolutely. During your tenure here at Coastal Carolina, how long have you been at Coastal Carolina University? Well, I arrived with Hurricane Hugo in, I guess, what, 1989. Right. And uh, I've been there for ever since. Almost and, 20 years. Yeah. Just so it, uh, it's been exciting. Uh, you know, we have a really nice Computer Science department and uh, good faculty, good students. And when you arrived, was the location for the classes and where your offices were the same as they are now? No, we've moved about uh, two times. We originally <laughs> were in Kearns Hall, where education is now. Right. Then we were over in the Wall Building with School of Business, and now we're across the highway in a, in a building across from the Atlantic Center. Yes, a and perfect location. Yeah, it's great facilities. Is that exclusively now computer science that are in that, that one building? Well, for our first year, we, we had it to ourselves. But uh, now we've been joined by the departments of marine science and psychology and sociology. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that much is happening out there. Yeah, so there's a synergy going on the other side of the highway across, you know, from the main campus. Sure, of course. Probably a lot of folks don't even know about that. Y'all may be hidden back there. That's right. <laughs> That's a, both its pluses and minuses. <laughs> Being hidden back there. Are you originally from the area? Uh, no, you know, I, we've been here about 18 years. I was right. originally uh, uh, born in uh, Iowa, but lived most of my life in Arlington, Virginia. Okay, sure. Northern Virginia. Absolutely. And had you thought about going into computer science at an early age, Steve? I had an interest in computers, but I primarily uh, I initially went into mathematics. And, uh, and I was, uh, got my doctorate from the University of Oklahoma, and I started teaching and my my first teaching job ended up in a, a, is a in a missionary college over in Beirut, Lebanon. Is that right in Lebanon? Your first full-time teaching position. That's correct. Amazing. What was that like? Well, it was kind of exciting. It was just when the Lebanese war broke out and uh at night we used to be able to watch the battle for the city of uh Beirut from our, our porch of our house and uh it uh, it, was, it was some trying times. Uh, mm. we I, I remember on one occasion uh, they, uh, I was asked to give blood, and uh, an army came up uh, of Lebanese soldiers. They put a machine gun into my stomach and asked me if I would like to donate blood, and I said yes, I would. Love to <laughs> oh my God! But so it, you know, we were we were in the thick of the fighting, and but uh, you know we managed to survive and. Uh, after about seven months there, well, we were evacuated to the island of Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And in the island of Cyprus, we ended up in between in a no man's land, actually what's called the green zone, between the Turks and the, uh, and the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you was, had family with you over there during that time? Steve? At, the, at the time, I had my wife and two daughters, and my third daughter was actually born on the island of Cyprus. Is that right? And then uh, when we were given the opportunity to take a position in Uganda, and I, at that point I said, hey, maybe I, I was ABD, hadn't finished my doctorate, and I said, well, let me go back and, you know, write my dissertation and right. you know, go come back to the States. It's a little bit safer. Did you. you ever go back to Uganda? or I, uh, No, I, right. we, we stayed out. You and, stayed uh, mainland, and you stayed here right. since then. How exciting, though, to start your teaching profession. So you figured out, even during your tenure with mathematics, that you wanted to become a professor. Uh, yeah, I was teaching at one point in, in Georgia, and uh, the person teaching computer science had, uh, was a chemist, and they had left for a position in Texas, and uh, you know, they asked for a volunteer to teach computer science. In addition, I was teaching math, and uh, I, you know, I had taught myself Fortran and some other early programming languages. Mm -hmm. 
and I enjoyed it so much. I said, "Hey, I I, I like this better than mathematics." And right. I looked for the opportunity to you know to get a master's degree in computer science. Mm -hmm. Must be thrilling these days to have both students who really have a good sense of computers when they get into the classroom, as well as probably exciting for first timers. When you do, you have students who want to take intro classes that are just not experienced uh, computers much? Uh, yes, we have, you know, students come to us with varied skills. Some of them, you know, come to us with uh, where they, you know, had the pr practice programming. Others, you know, have, you know, basically just turned the computer on. But uh, right. you know, the introductory courses are aimed at taking the students where they are and giving them the, the, the skills. So after about a four course sequence, they, you know, they're fairly good programmers uh, and they can and you know they can survive in the major and uh, typically if they can make it through the first four courses in the sequence then the program actually gets a little bit easier really yeah mm -hmm. yeah they probably learn in a heck of a lot what are some of the basic things for our viewers here on a friday morning that students will be learning in that first uh... is there a computer one oh one or a yeah, it's it, an early well, intro class. Yeah, in the early course, we aim at primarily two things: uh, y y giving them skills so that they can b become problem solvers in mm. analyzing programs, so that they learn know how to go about writing it. And then, of course, we start introducing them to teaching, a, you know, a, a language. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, currently, we're using the Java language. And uh, the, the programs all around the country are, are, are more web centric because of the the impact of the web on our, on our daily lives. Mm -hmm. When I first got here, we were teaching in the language Pascal, and I've seen it go from Pascal to C to C++ and now Java, and you know, I dare say, you know, four years from now, we'll be talking about another language. Yeah. Do you have, a, have you thought about it? Nostradamus there, a crystal ball, any idea what kind of language you could potentially be talking about in four years? Um, it could be the language. We're going to get you on camera right, <laughs> right now on a Friday morning. That's it could, right. It could be the language C sharp or a couple other languages, an, an but entirely uh, new language. Or, but the, the, the thing is, is that one about computer science is that you know change is just endemic to the to the program, and you you can't sit still in in this program, and so therefore you know uh, the professors and the students, you know what we learn one year will be out of date, you know, two years later, right. because you know. You know, computers are so you know uh, pervasive in society that you know you, everywhere you go, you you know you have to deal with computers. Amazing, Steve. You know, I think we, we you mentioned before we started filming, you and your wife were blessed with a fourth child who happened to be a daughter as well. Have any of your four girls gotten involved in computer science, or have you given them the bug, gotten them interested? I I did my best, but I think their mother <laughs> won out. My, my my wife Rita, she has a. Uh, a uh, bachelor's degree in psychology. And uh -huh. Apparently that affected most of my daughters. <laughs> two of them have gone to Coastal and pursued degrees in uh, psychology. The third one pursued a degree from Coastal in uh, sociology. And our baby, our Kimberly, now is a uh, sophomore student at uh, Southern Adventist University in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Right, right. And she's she's thinking about either sociology or psychology, but something entirely different. Than, well, uh, she, she's actually going to nursing. So. Is that right? Okay. Again, different than computer science. That's fascinating. You know, when you think about, obviously, the impact you can have on students at the same time in the, in the household, and how it, uh, passing on the things, it's always fascinating. When you're working with lots of kids, what, uh, how that transcends uh, to your daily life. Indeed. Uh, you know, four daughters have a you know, real blessing. Uh, Absolutely. I wouldn't trade it any one of them. <laughs> Could you ever imagine uh, even having a son now having raised four daughters? I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. How exciting, Steve. You know, when we think about uh, some of the things that majors are learning these days, you talk about a, l a little bit there what first-year students, what are some of the, as they progress and, and have, they've made a determination mm -hmm. to not only major computer science, what are most of your students thinking about doing after graduation? Well, we, at Coastal we have two uh, options for the, for the majors. We have the, the theoretical option, which is kind of a blend of computer science with the math and the sciences and it you know it's it's in this kind of option people are looking for jobs as maybe hardcore programmers mm -hmm. research scientists in computer science uh, you know there's the area of robotics artificial intelligence mm. bioinformatics which you know basically deals with writing the 
the code that data mines the human genome and other you know, uh, DNA sequences. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of exciting things going on there. I mean, uh, you, you know, it's been predicted that within the next four or five years, you know, computers would become self-aware. Now that's going to be some exciting times when your computer knows that it exists. Mm. Now our other option is the uh, information systems option, and of course this is a blend of computer science with a lot of business applications. Right. Sure. And obviously, you know, with the the advent of the web, it, it, there's just tremendous opportunities there as well. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, between the two uh, areas, you know, there's a, there's a job waiting for people, and that's one nice thing about computer science. And, and even though there's been some outsourcing of some of the nuts and bolts jobs overseas, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of opportunity for our majors to find positions and here so, in the U.S. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, we, they they, rare, they rarely have a, a difficulty finding a job. That's tremendous. Of course, a lot of your students recently have been doing some uh, some great summer intern programs as well as leaving for a little time and then coming back to Coastal. You've got some examples recently of going off to some major companies. Uh, yes, when I when I got here, I wanted to make sure that we had a, a active co-op or intern program. Mm -hmm. So we added the courses to our curriculum and then uh, you know we've looked for intern uh, position possibilities both within the community and outside and recently we've had some um, major uh, intern opportunities for our students with City Cor Corporation mm -hmm. and uh, our students have been uh, taking time off from their studies to to work in computer science in the field uh, in Miami and, and New Jersey New York so they're, they're having some very good opportunities and you know it gives them that experience and so when they go out and seek the job you know they have you know real life experience right. besides just the education critical very important i think over your eighteen year tenure here you served nine years as chairman uh, i opened up with you saying you're acting chair is there a, a currently a chairman not around or a uh... yeah my, one of my after after we achieved our uh... what we call a bet accreditation this is something we had uh... You know, been planning on and we worked to, to achieve and it, uh, at that at the conclusion of that accreditation I thought well I've been chair for about nine years mm -hmm. and I look for an opportunity to uh, maybe engage a little bit more in research right so I, I hired my replacement and Dr. Mm -hmm. Jean-Louis Lassay and mm. uh, he is a uh, can best be described as a world-class computer scientist, and is he, that right? And, and Coastal is very fortunate to have a, a man of his caliber. Uh, and he, you know, he had been, you know, he, for example, he has interviewed at places like the University of Chicago and Stanford, and you know, so he he could go just about any major university in the world, but mm. uh, he has selected our community. But anyway, he likes to engage in research, particularly in the summer times. And so uh, basically, I ended up uh, taking over as chair in, uh, in, the, in the summers. In the summer, sure. And then when he gets back in the fall, I step back as a you know pr professor of computer science. Something you've done uh, en enough yeah. that you're you're comfortable in that role. And of course, as the chair, uh, well, for Jean Louis during the school year, what you've done over the nine year a period as as the full time chair, you're pretty dang active there. Uh, I mean, that that requires a good bit of responsibility uh, definitely that you know being in the chair of a department at coastal you know you know is almost a full-time job now mm -hmm. and, uh, but it uh, it's very rewarding and uh, it's exciting because you, you know you get to take part in the growth of the program and oh yeah and, and you know just you know direct the program and, and make it improve upon it you know you, that's our goal you mentioned a bet accreditation what does a bet stand for what's the significance of accreditation for uh, for the department at coastal and when you got it uh, during your tenure as chairman formally yeah well a bet accreditation is the accreditation board for engineering and technology okay and they uh, oh a number of years ago computer science accreditation board came under their uh, jurisdiction the two joined together Mm -hmm. And so uh, they don't dec uh, accredit departments, but they do accredit programs. Mm. And our, particularly our theoretical track, you know, has meant the, this, the standards for accreditation. Uh, we've been we received our accreditation uh, about four years ago, five years ago now, mm -hmm. and uh, it was quite exciting. Uh, very rarely do uh, departments going up for accreditation the first time received the full six-year accreditation really? w without the need for a, a midterm visit after three years or a midterm report. 
Right. And so we were very excited that we got the full six-year accreditation. And uh, what it means to us is that it's, it's just a market distinction. It, basically, it's good for our students uh, mm -hmm. because it attracts good faculty. It, it, it attracts good students. And when our students apply for jobs, you know, the employers, particularly at the major companies, look for, you know, are you coming from an accredited department? Aha. Uh -huh. And then when they apply to graduate school, you know, if, they, if you apply to a graduate school uh, and they see that you're coming from a program that's accredited, you know, it's, you're much more likely to get accepted, you know, in, in, in a graduate program. That's a very good point. And so it, you know, it, uh, you know, has uh, done, you know, you know, it has been a you know, positive thing. And it's also a positive thing for, you know, tracking faculty. You know, we, you know faculty, when they look for uh, positions in computer science, want to know, is it a quality program? I'm sure, in, particularly in, if you were competing in Stanford, the University of Chicago, to get Jean-Louis Lassay, having that ABET accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, before he arrived was a great thing for you to have gotten in place so that you could attract a chairman like that and then also continue to attract great faculty. Indeed. That, is, Indeed. Uh, that was great thinking, great thinking. What are some of the neat things happening in the department? I think, I think you mentioned before we started filming that uh, even though we think about the green room as something special behind the scenes at a, uh, at a rock, rock hall or at a rock and roll location, the green room is something else <laughs> that's being used there at the computer science department. Um, Dr. Lassay and myself, uh, we, we got to thinking that we wanted to enhance that freshman experience, first particularly in the early courses. So uh, what we looked for was ways of uh, not taking a break from the day-to-day -day programming ch uh, chores and exposing the students to the wide variety of things that are happening in computer science. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the concept of what we call action labs, where mm -hmm. they, and we had action labs in, say, computer security, computer hardware, uh, bioinformatics, and it would, uh, robotics, and it would give the students a break, for, you know, once in a while to go and see some of the cutting edge things that are happening in computer science right. and, and get their hands on you know, the robots and so forth. And uh, then we got to thinking that we had, we had developed a lab in bioinformatics that we called the Jurassic Park Lab, mm. where the students were given a DNA sequence. They had to go online and research that sequence and find out uh, what organisms were part of that sequence and it turned out that uh, you know they would track it down and eventually they would find that this DNA sequence had been spliced with the African green tree frog code DNA no. and they had to use you know a real world search DNA engines to find sure. this well we also thought that, you know that perhaps uh, a you know students and, and, and the young people in general are so caught up with computer games what if we developed a action lab that they took part in the game. Yes. Brilliant. So, so, so we thought of how how could we do this, and so we we, we developed a, a green room. So we we took one of our uh, labs, uh, bought the, this very expensive paint for setting up a green room, <laughs> and it's it's an awesome. You, know, you just walk in there. It's just a you know a room that's green, but we're able to film students and faculty. And of course, from there, place them in settings anywhere in the world. Oh, brilliant! And, yes. And, and, and recently, we had students developing a game uh, around uh, bioinformatics, and they placed themselves to uh, introduce the game. The team of programmers filmed themselves in the green room, placed themselves actually in the lab. And so they were walking around mythical buildings, myth mythical computer science labs, chemistry labs. And you, you, you wouldn't, you know, you, you, from, uh, from your vision, you would think that they were actually in that setting. Right, but right. But in, in fact, they were, you know, in, in the green room. So oh, fascinating. the students are quite excited about this. What a brilliant idea. Absolutely. So yeah. Something I'm sure. The, and how long has that been in place, Steve? Uh, we, we, we built that last <laughs> summer. And, uh, we're, you know, we've been using it this, this year. And, and we're looking for other, you know, uh, opportunities. Of, you know, we, we, did the, we did the hardware lab. Right. And we're going to do, you know, and so the students actually, instead of actually taking away part of a physical computer now, will actually go in and have to earn points to obtain parts 
and, but they will build the lab in, a, in this virtual reality mode. So it's kind of, kind of exciting. That is fantastic. Well, that must be the, a total, I mean, an absolute thrill for everyone involved, particularly for you, as Jean-Louis will say, having put that together. Has this been done in other institutions of higher learning? Is this, um, I can't imagine. Uh, well, uh, we haven't seen too much of it. I'm yeah. sure some of it's going on, but uh, yeah. you know, we, we thought you know, in two areas, this, the introductory classes and particularly in this Cr uh, critical area of bioinformatics right. that we wanted to have these, you know, these type of lab experiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does the Department of Computer Science at Coastal Carolina regularly interface with other departments there on campus, for instance, the Wall College of Business or any of the other graduate programs? Are you all interfacing a lot with and, uh, and trying to get the students involved? Well, yes, uh, the, we, we work quite closely with the Wall College of Business, uh, more so recently, and uh, particularly the students in our uh, information systems program. Right. They have to have a, you know, a, a number of courses in business anyway. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is make a, a seamless integration between our courses in the information systems program and at the conclusion of their degree in information systems, they can move on to a, you know the, the coastal's new masters in business. And so mm -hmm. we have a number of students now that are, you know, trying to you know move from one area to the other. And, and I think that's going to work out be a plus for both, you know, the College of Business and for our majors as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. As you see students who, both students that are coming in for the first time, as well as ones that have determined they want to major in computer science and have. Uh, gotten a little more advanced. What are some topics right now that are hot topics that students are wanting to really wanting to learn more about? You mentioned computer security, bioinformatics, uh, other aspects. What are things that they're really grasping to learn more about? Uh, well, the whole discipline has come obviously far more web centric, right? And, and, and things that are uh, you know web based and uh, the applications and the and of course the computer security is 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 a, is a spin off of of web centric applications right. but our you know but our you know the students you know are looking in those areas uh, in the more the applied the information systems track and then of course again there's you know there's so much work being do, done in artificial intelligence oh, yeah. and and the idea of you know robotics that uh, you know those those are some very hot areas in in the, in the field absolutely john kibler who you may remember who was with us. Uh, we filmed at the Holiday Inn West during a recent computer security conference that I know Coastal was very active in, and John Kibler was with us for two days. We had an attorney from Parker Poe, one from Womble Carlisle. John Stamey subbed in for Jean-Louis Lassay, wasn't mm -hmm. feeling well that week. But it was fascinating as uh, John Kibler from Charleston was talking about some real computer security issues that a lot of people need to be thinking about very carefully when they get online and of course talking about the mafia's involvement and indeed. organized crime indeed and this is real steve mm -hmm. uh, it's a real problem and uh, you know some of my research recently as well as my colleague uh, dr lassay is we're, we're looking at some real-time intruder detection systems and some so much things are based on models where if they if if, if there's a known security threat there's a database that can react to it, but we're trying to develop uh, algorithms and procedures for real-time trapping of unknown intruder detection. Really? Oh, that and, 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 and so that you know that kind of stuff would uh, you know tremendously benefit the you know in the areas of security. Uh, speaking of the security area, one of our students, uh, Tony Prince. Um, well, I, he graduated oh well, maybe about ten years. 12 years ago in our right, program, right. but he went on to found a, sec a computer security company, and uh, he, it was funny, he uh, stopped by my office, oh, probably about eight or nine years ago, and said, uh, Dr. Shu, I'm going to, uh, I'm tired of living in the Atlanta area, I'm founding a, com a computer security company, and he, he says, I can live anywhere in the United States I want to live, and he says, I'm going to bring it back to the Myrtle Beach area, because that's my home. Is that and I, right? And I said, come on back. And now, Yesterday, I met one of his employees, one of our students that had graduated, that's working for the security company. And I said, "How's uh, 
Tony Prince doing? And it turns out that Tony's now retired. Is you know? that right? So, you know, in, he's in his late 30s or early 40s, and no, now he's Steve. retired and living on a yacht. <laughs> that is fascinating. Well, that company's done a lot lurk, and it changed its name when yeah. it bought a company in Atlanta. So yeah, I know so, they've done some great so, things. Well, so, please so. tell him. We'd love to get him on sometime. The best part for you, Steve, being in the classroom is probably what? What, what is the most exciting aspect for you? Um, I like the 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 engagements of the students to challenge them to uh, you know to br try to bring out the best in, in them right. and, it, it, and and basically you know I, I get a kick when we get these letters and where students write back and say you know you know thanks for that class because you know here's what I'm doing and uh, you know you know Dr. Shiel you know you know you know, we have a good program uh, recently I got a letter from a young lady that had graduated from our program uh, she went to work for Cisco Systems, and uh, she was competing with students from uh, schools like IBM and so forth. And she says, and, and I got the job. And she says, a little girl from you know, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, got the job over some of these major universities. So you know, I think we're doing the right thing if our students can compete not only for jobs, but for, you know, for quality graduate school Those programs. Are great words. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Steve. You know, you're quite welcome. I've enjoyed the experience. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Dr. Steve Scheel coming up next. You had to be wondering, am I doing the right thing? Have I made the right career choice? Is that Lebanese soldier had the machine gun up to his stomach asking him to, if he wanted to donate blood while he was there in Beirut? Think about that, the first experience, and then fast forward to the present, the excitement of getting a letter from a student saying, thank you so much for that first class. It opened the door to a new profession that in my entire life has changed. The excitement about being in the classroom, making a difference for students' lives, Learn more about Coastal Carolina University. Go online to coastal.edu. That's coastal.edu.